everybody I'm here today to do a top 10 Tuesday video I know it's a day late but I, I couldn't film anything yesterday and whatever I don't care it doesn't have to be uh, exactly on Tuesday anyway uh, today's top 10 Tuesday is a rewind where you get to go back and choose any of the previous top 10 Tuesday topics I originally I really wanted to do another uh, top 10 favorite slash least favorite book covers video because I already did one last year like one of my earliest videos ever but I wanted to do a revamped one with all new books from this year but uh, I since I don't have any of the books that would be on that list here it's really not as fun to do it so I decided to do something else and what I eventually ended up doing was copying from a panda for Amanda's topic and deciding on bookish pet peeves because I am a a complainer by nature I love to complain about stuff and I I have a lot of pet peeves so I thought this would be right up my alley and it's a lot easier to do without like you know for covers it's more of a visual thing and I'm much too lazy and too horrible at editing to show you the covers I mean I, I all I can basically do with my Windows Movie Maker is to like do a flash to the cover I can't put it over like my speaking or put it on the side because I am technologically challenged <laughs> so we're going with bookish pet peeves and thanks to a panda for Amanda for uh, giving me this idea inadvertently uh, my number one pet peeve is love triangles and I said this before oh so many times in probably numerous book reviews I've mentioned it in uh, I think my uh, what was that called <laughs> Oh, in my buzzwords and deal breakers video, this was one of my deal breakers. I am to the point where I just despise love triangles. I have seen it oh too many times, and for the great majority of times, it's really so obvious that one one guy is going to end up with the heroine, or vice versa. But usually, it's a girl with two guys, and it's really just pointless and gratuitous to put in this triangle because you know who she's going to end up with anyway, not to mention being so totally annoying and repetitive. Number two is Mary Sue characters. I really, I haven't read about any of these for a long time. There's one specific series that had a couple that really, really grated on my nerves and I won't mention it, but I hate Mary Sue's, especially in this one series I read where the main character was already really a Mary Sue, and then there was a new character introduced in the last book that was an even bigger, worse Mary Sue than that character. It made me want to claw my eyes out. <laughs> Number three is jerky or arrogant love interests. <sighs> this is like the Edward Cullen uh, Jace Wayland type of character from The Immortal Instruments where the love interest the heroine is just so attracted to is a jerk and frankly a jackass and really has no redeeming qualities other than his looks so there's no real reason why the heroine should be so attracted to him and why all of the female readers who read the books fawn over this character and love him when he is an asshole Number four is defacing books in any way, whether that's writing in the books, which I know a lot of people love to do, but to me that is just a sin, or dog earing the pages, you know, bending the spines too much, spilling stuff on it, whatever, that's an accident. But intentional stuff, especially like the dog earing or folding over of pages, drives me nuts. I once lent a book to a friend who dog eared a page to mark it for herself. I never let her read another one of my books after that point. Sorry if you see this video. I won't mention your name, but uh, I've never forgotten. <laughs> Number five is Deckled Edges. And I actually have an example right here. This is God's Chinese Son, and it's about the Taiping Rebellion in China. Uh, I had to read this for a Chinese history class. And my video quality isn't really that good, but it's basically it's these uneven page edges that they look kind of cool. They make a book look like it has character, I guess, or it's historic and stuff, but they are horrible. You can't flip through. You've got to, like, grab this. You can't easily, you can't flip because you always get the too short 
and two long pages skip and it's I hate them I hate these deckled edges I know people like the effect of how it looks but I just can't stand them whatsoever number six is purple prose and I'm looking at you Dickens uh, Charles Dickens purple prose makes me just my eyes glaze over when I read it I cannot stand purple prose uh, Dickens is the one I always is the top of my mind for this because he was paid by the word so I'm sure it was intentional all of his long you know paragraphs upon paragraphs about nothing where really if you get down to the the, the bare bones and strip away all that purple prose a lot of his stories are really actually really good just the writing stops me from finding them engaging in book form which is really sad because I like a lot of adaptations of his work also you know in Twilight with Bella blathering on and on about how beautiful Edward is and I don't know how many more adverbs and adjectives there are to describe Edward's manly gorgeousness but please bleh, makes me gag Number seven is stupid book covers. By this I mean just generally ugly covers or because who wants to read a book with an ugly cover? I'll read it anyway, obviously. I'm not going to let that stop me from enjoying the book, but I would obviously much rather have a pretty book cover. Also, covers that have nothing to do with the books. I, I can't stand this where a cover just gives you the totally wrong impression and really you wonder did the cover artist ever actually read this book it has nothing to do with anything I just read is this was this misplaced was this supposed to be the cover for another book I've, I've had that kind of experience where I'm like what is going on here also the really annoying cover trends especially in YA where the one is like the really just the big the girl's face really big on the cover I can't stand those and uh, another one is changing book covers. And I remember Panda for Amanda said this in, in her video as well, where you have a book series where it has all one kind of similar cover design. And then somewhere uh, along the way, the publishers decide to change the cover and go with a whole new theme. And it's, like, it's really annoying to have, you know, two different designs on your shelf. And it's like, what are you going to do? Buy all new set so the first books that you already have so they're all in the same design I'm sure that's what the publishers want you to do and that's what they're thinking is or just have it just looking terrible and really out of place on your shelf I mean you I would most likely just leave it but uh, it's still really annoying uh, a couple examples that come to mind number one I think of is uh, the Artemis Fowl series where I think it was like right before uh, their last book that was out the uh, Atlantis Complex, which is the seventh out of eight books. It's the second to last book. They changed the cover design. Uh, thankfully, I had not bought any of the books before that point, so all mine have the same design. But if I had, I would have been extremely annoyed. Another one is even just the Harry Potter series. The paperback American versions, they changed just, it was a very minimal change, but even so, I noticed it. The uh, colors on the spine, where they have those like diamond design, the slightly changed those and there that was like right before the uh, Deathly Hallows which is the last one right before that before that paperback came out so I have six that are all one way and then this one that is another way and I'm sure most people wouldn't notice it but I do and it really bugs me number eight uh, this is characters that are out of place in their time period or setting of the book usually what I mean by this the most uh, common thing that I have noticed is in historical fiction where you have characters that to me at least really just seem like modern people dressed up in a historic setting like they're really out of place and they do not belong the most uh, recent example I can give you is the uh, A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libra Bray the main character in that Gemma Doyle a lot of her uh, she really was a character that did not seemed to me like she belonged in Victorian England and part of that I guess is the point but uh, it just it went too far to me I'm like this is not a, a Victorian girl whatsoever this is a you know 21st century girl dressed up in modern in uh, in Victorian England and it just it, it almost ruined the whole book for me I have not picked up the rest of that series it just it was just totally out of place and it made the book fail so I can't stand that other usually it comes into play in like historical romances, which I 
I'm sorry to say I read it was the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn, which is a set of Regency romances. All It's a set of eight books following eight different siblings. And those characters and the writing, it was just, it was not right. No, 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 God, no bad memories. Number nine is too high of prices, especially for ebooks. I know that publishers and authors or whatever need to get money, but I don't see the reason why ebooks can be more expensive than the physical form of the same book. Can someone enlighten me on that? Especially when the publisher will not allow for discounts on an ebook. I'm sorry? Um, someone, a friend of mine who used to work at a bookstore, told me. Uh, he read some article showing how to the price or the cost of making an ebook was about the same as that of making a regular book. What that article failed to mention was that that is the cost of making one ebook and the cost of making one physical book. After you've made the one ebook, you just can hit copy and paste and you have your other million copies for free instead of, you know, all of the printing costs and the paper and stuff for making other physical books. So yeah, that really doesn't make any sense. Number 10 is insta-love slash rushed romances. I've talked about this in a lot of my book review videos where I feel like the romance feels too rushed to me and that it kind of ruined part of my experience of the book. I even insta-love, I generally just hate. They're really obvious, you know, Twilight as Bella and Edward crap where it's just so obvious oh we love each other right away there have been other instances of books where I'm deceived and in the beginning there is no insta love the characters you know don't automatically like each other and, um, so I'm like oh okay this one is gonna be the romance is gonna be slowed down and it's gonna have you know a slower pace and take its time to develop and grow and no it is even because a few chapters after that, everything changes and they're automatically in love. It's just like a delayed insta-love, really. Uh, the most, two most recent examples I can think of are Wondrous Strange by Leslie Livingston and Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi. Both two insta instances where I was tricked and be like, hey, this is a different kind of romance and it slowed down. Oh wait, no it's not. That wraps up my top 10 bookish pet peeves. I hope I didn't get too crazy on that one. But uh, if any of you guys want to do uh, this topic or any other Top 10 Tuesday, just check out their uh, the Broken the Bookish is link for all of their rewinds. They've got a lot of cool topics on there. I'd love to see what um, some of the other guys have to say about this or any other of their topics. It would be really cool. I'll see you guys in my next video.